So I want to read a passage of Scripture, but today I want to read it from the paraphrase known as the message. It's a passage that we've heard several times, but I just want you to hear it in a different way. Sometimes when we read the Scriptures, our familiarity can breed a lack of creativity in the reading because we're just used to hearing it the same way. And I usually don't read from paraphrases. I usually interpret and clarify because I want you to know that a paraphrase is a paraphrase. Okay? It's a paraphrase. It, it's an interpretive translation. But this, this paraphrase is... Uh, it's very helpful in helping us to see the beauty of our Lord Jesus and the level of investment that he has in us, and the level of glory that is within him and that he demonstrated. Okay, so I'm reading this paraphrase. How many of you, you're familiar with the message? How many of you are familiar with the message? Listen, if you're not familiar with the message, go check out the message. I mean, it's in just about every uh, list of uh, Bible translations um, in, in, our, in your automated uh, platform, or automated resources, rather. And um, it's, just, it's just a beautiful, um, beautiful paraphrase. And so here, here it is. I'm reading John chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 14, verse 14, and then verses 17 through 18. Here it is. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes. The one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son. Generous inside and out. True from start to finish. We all live off his generous abundance. Gift after gift after gift. We got the basics from Moses. And then this exuberant giving and receiving this endless knowing and understanding, all this came through Jesus, the Messiah. No one has ever seen God. Not so much as a glimpse. This one-of-a-kind God expression who exists at the very heart of the Father has made him plain as day. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? That's good. As a young man, Philip Yancey, author and Christian apologist, he managed a saltwater aquarium. He discovered that it was not an easy job. He thought it would be easier when he began, but as he engaged it, it was tougher than he anticipated. He would monitor nitrate levels and ammonia content in the water. He pumped into the water enzymes and antibiotics and vitamins. He filtered the water with glass uh, fibers and charcoal. He had to learn a lot. It was not as easy of a job as he, he, could, he thought it would be. Um, you would think that the fish would be grateful to him. Not so. In fact, when his shadow uh, appeared, when it loomed above the tank, every one of them would quickly retreat underneath the nearest shell. He was too large. <laughs> he, he was too incomprehensible to them when he acted for them. They, they did not know that his acts were actually not a threat, but they were acts of mercy. 
Changing their perspective would require a kind of an incarnation. Changing their perspective was not something that he was capable of doing because in order for it to happen, he would have to become a fish and correct their misunderstandings and speak to them in a language that they could understand. But it was impossible for him to do this. And yet what is impossible with humans is infinitely possible with God. Friend, friend, knowing that he was too large, knowing that we could not decipher the details of who he is and who he, uh, who he wants you and I to become, knowing that God sent Jesus in the flesh born of a teenage virgin in order to make himself plain. He, he wanted to make himself capable of being interpreted. This was impossible with men and is impossible with men, but it is possible with God. And so through Christ, God has done the miraculous. It's one of the greatest miracles in all of the Bible. He, he demonstrated who God was through body language. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about body language. For, for God to be fully understood, for us to appreciate his mercy at a level that will lead us to swim toward him instead of swimming away from him. Simple words are inadequate. Simple words, even spiritual words, with, would not do. Body language is required. He, he would have to be in flesh in order for us to understand his largeness and to interpret what he does as acts of mercy. And throughout the Old Testament, God would speak through prophets. And before the prophets relayed what God said, they would frequently qualify their statements with this phrase, thus saith the Lord. In the newer translations, they would say, this is the word of the Lord. And over 415 times, one of these statements or an equivalent statement is said, is mentioned in the Bible. This is the word of the Lord. And yet when Jesus came, God pointed his long sovereign finger at his son. And he says, this is the word of the Lord. The Bible says when he was baptized, there, there was a voice heard saying, this is my son whom I love. And with him, I am well pleased. This is the word. This is the word of the Lord. Listen to him. He speaks for me in a way that others could never do. In the past, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe and in fleshment of the son was inquired for you and I to understand who God is. Yeah, this is, this is a miracle. We, we should do, we would do well. We all would do well to put more respect on the incarnation of Jesus. Yeah. The son of God. Think about it. The son of God, he climbed down from heaven. 
He, he climbed down from heaven, marrying deity with humanity. He left his eternal father to be raised by two teenagers. That was a long climb down. He left the throne of God for the womb of a woman, Mary. That was a long climb down. How did he humble himself knowing his resume to listen and uh, to be provided for by Joseph when he just left his eternal father? How did he hide his eternal credentials in a human body? Friend, this was a long climb down, and yet he did it because that was a message that made him come worth it. It was a long climb down so that he could lead us in a long climb up to the Father, to the Father. To understand Jesus is to know his daddy. And no, no understanding of Jesus. You and I don't understand God. Friend, we can quote a lot of scriptures, but until we understand that every scripture is talking about Jesus, we don't quite get the story yet. It's all about Jesus. It all leads to Jesus. It all proceeds from Jesus. It's all organized around Jesus. Jesus, that's why Paul said, when I stood before you, I preached Christ. Him crucified. You can't preach David without preaching Christ. You, you don't really understand Moses until you understand Christ. You, you and I don't really get Elijah until we understand Christ. He's the interpretive key to the Bible. It's a long climb down, but, but it was worth it. Because he had a message that could not be communicated any other way. Because he's too large. <laughs> he's too incomprehensible to do it any other way. Yeah. And listen to what he's saying through his body language. Through his body language. Jesus says, I want to live with you. That's the reason for the long climb down. He says, I want to live with you. That's what his body tells us. Yeah, I, I want to live with you. I want to, I want to go to H-E-B with you. I want, to, I want us to shop together. I want you to invite me over for dinner. I, I want you to text me. I, yeah, I want to live with you. I, yeah, I don't want... I don't want this distant relationship. I, I've come because you hadn't understood this before. You, you thought it was about quoting scripture and uh, doing right things. But I want to live with you so that you can understand what, what all of the other things you've been told R really mean. I want to live with you. Mm -hmm. I want you to call me on your cell phone. In fact, listen, in fact, he says, I want us to be in the same family. To all who received him, to those who believe on his name, he gave them the right. Everybody say right. He gave them the right to become children of God. He says, I want to be in your family. I want you to rather be in my family. And I want, uh, I want your family to be in my family. In fact, I have given them the power to choose to be children of God. That's important. Listen, the right, the right, the right. In, in other words, he wants to adopt us. But the key is I got to choose to adopt him. I've got to choose to let him adopt me. Yeah, yeah. I've given you the right to choose. I want to be in your family. That's why I came down here. And I, I, I want to give you the invitation for us to do life together as family members, the family members that you like. The power to choose. Now, now I love this because the term receive in the Bible, it means to welcome. It means it's not just a simple 
exchange. He says, to as many as receive him. That, that means you welcome him. Welcome him into your, your life. It's, it's not just uh, some head-based transformation. No, no. It's not a head-only conviction about a set of principles. No, 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 no. It's to, to welcome him, to, to receive him, to believe in his name. A lot of times uh, we take the teeth out of faith, saving belief. We take the teeth out of it. It's not just being able to quote Romans 10 and 9. If you confess the Lord with your mouth, believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead. That Listen, you shall be. No, 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 no. It, it, when I do that, I open the door and I let him come into the house. And, and, and I welcome him to the extent that I just let him walk around the house, do whatever he wants to do. To so believe in his name. That, that means to, to let him be who he is. To, to not, not restrict him. To believe in his name. It, 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 it's to receive and welcome him as our savior. And as our forgiver. And, and as our leader. And to just let him have control of the house. And that's why I came. Because I want you to know. That, that, that this relationship, this pseudo connection we have is not enough for me. I want to be a part of the family and I want to make you a part of the forever family. It's not enough. So if you're here today and you never welcomed him in, <laughs> welcomed me, him in, this ain't a rental agreement. We, we, we're not vet, vetting him. Welcome him in. Do life with him. Listen, if you haven't, haven't done that, you can do that today. Because that's what he said in the body. And he demonstrated it in how he lived. Some of us, we got family members we ain't called in years. So once I make him a member of the family, I got to make sure that I stay in touch with him. I, I, I got to make sure I text him and say, okay, okay, what do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, can, Lord, Lord I, I'm ready to go back to dinner with you. I ain't had dinner with you in a while. I mean, <laughs> that, that's welcoming him. And you and I can be in families and not go see our daddy enough. Yeah, he, he, he says, listen, I want to be in your family, but... It's important that if I'm in your family that you come and not only hang out with me, but hang out with the other members of the family. Now, remember that Jesus is Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, Emmanuel does not mean God with me. It means God with. That, that's a part of Jesus that I can only understand when us are getting together. Can't understand it in isolation. So he, he said, I got, to, I got to give them some body language because they only understand about 20% of what I'm saying. I, they, they got to hear my, my tone. They got to look into my eyes. Yeah. His body language is always speaking. His body language says, I want to live before you. I want you to see. I want you to see this. I, I want to be an object lesson. For you so that you can understand God. It said that a picture is worth a thousand words. But the life of Jesus teaches us that a picture is worth far more than that. It's worth eternal life. A picture is what helps us to understand the details of life. It's worthy of our slow, reflective observation. This picture of the Son of God. Jesus became human so that he could show us the Father. He show us the Father. Through, through his life, his enfleshment, he shows us how to enjoy God. He shows us the attributes of God. 
He shows us how to pray to God. He shows us the proper motivations for pursuing God. He shows us how to have a relationship, yes, with God, but he shows us as well how to redistribute the kindness that God has given me and you. He shows us how to be blessed by God, how to think like God, how to engage God, what to anticipate from God because he says, listen, I'm going to prepare a place. And the only way you can get there is through me. I am the way, the truth. And the life, I, I came because I wanted not only to call you up, I wanted to walk in front of you. I wanted to show you how you get to the Father's house. Yeah. This is his body language. And this is why Jesus said, follow me. That, that was Jesus' favorite term for discipleship. Follow me. Yeah, because you got to see this. You got to see this to really appreciate it. Mo Moses, he, he, he did show you a few things, but even Moses, though he did a good job setting the foundation, don't, don't get it twisted, Moses gave the law, but I'm the fulfillment of the law. In fact, I fulfilled the law in my life. Moses did a good job, but you got to follow me to really get what I yeah, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Yeah, I want to give you a picture. I, I want to show you. Follow me. And friend, listen, if you are ready for a biblical challenge before the turn of the year, whatever you do with respect to your Bible reading, read the Gospels. And read, the, read the Gospels slowly. Because when we read the Gospels, what we see is the clarity that the body language gives to the spiritual life. Yeah, re read the Gospels. Follow him. Follow him from, from Bethlehem to Egypt. Follow him. Follow him from Egypt to Nazareth. Follow him from Nazareth to Capernaum because along the way, He's going to teach you how to be disappointed and how to go through despair. He's going to teach you what to say to other people and how to love your enemies. Follow him. And what we have in the Gospels is the visual, uh, the movements that he made in his life. He, when you saw him, Jesus said, you've already seen the Father. Yeah, I'm here to show you the Father. And the way I talk to you, that's what the Father would say. The way I live before you, that's what the Father would do. He and I are one. He and I are one. So if you, you up for a biblical challenge, now I'm suggesting, I'm not suggesting that you don't read Psalms or Proverbs or anything like that. I'm just saying, until you understand Jesus, all the other books can be legalistic. <laughs> Until you understand Jesus, you, you and I might not really appreciate what it means to love and grace and, and, and be gracious and all of those things because all of them are embodied in Jesus. And that's why as preachers, we often, we often apply what it is that we're talking about from other books of the Bible. We apply them to Jesus because Jesus is the picture of anything we just got through discussing in Genesis. That's what preaching Christ is all about. Realizing that everything is pointing, pointing to him. Here's the principle. Let me give you the picture. Picture of Jesus. Yeah. Now, listen, his body language is constantly talking. His body language says, I want to live sensitively to you. I want to, I want to empathize with you. Yeah, I, I want to sympathize with you. I, I want to experientially know what it is that you are feeling. Because I see it, but I, I, I want to assure you that I get it so that when you come to me, you'll have confidence that I understand what is going on in your heart. I want to live among you. I want to live with you so that when I encourage you, 
You, you realize that it's coming from a place of lived experience. And listen to me, everything that you and I have experienced, maybe not the specific thing, but every quadrant of temptation, every quadrant of success, every domain of, of uh, disappointment, Jesus has occupied it. And because he has occupied it, he has, he has the ability to not only help us, but also to connect with us and feel us. Anybody ever received any counsel from people and they meant well, but you can tell they didn't understand what you were going through? You know, they, they, they went online and they had a bunch of little points and they, they didn't understand the mystery of pain. That, that's a mystery of pain that, that a lot of people don't understand until they lived your experience. You ought to say amen right there because uh, I, you, Jesus said, I want to comfort you with some comfort that I received as I was walking down there with you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, want, I, want to, I want you to receive my comfort. And, and I know what I'm talking about because not only did I endure it, but I endured it perfectly. Have you ever read the Gospels? I want you to read the Gospels. I did say that just a minute ago. I want you to read the Gospels because what you see is that his body language tells us that he gets us. <laughs> Jesus wept. <laughs> That's body language. He, he, he didn't just show up and raise Lazarus from the, from the dead. He wept before he did it. He experienced the grief of his own soul and he experienced the pain of those who were around him. His body language told a story. Jesus got angry. Anybody read that? Jesus got angry at these church folk. They were in the lobby selling chicken and all of that. And they were supposed to be like fellowshipping in the lobby, listening carriage yeah and they, they were interrupting the worship and they were interrupting the worship in, in a, a a way that was racialized because they, they were only doing it in the court of the Gentiles <laughs> and, and so he dealt with racism and just like you get angry about racism Jesus got angry about racism and he called for justice in his house Jesus was tempted by sin. He was tempted by sin. He experienced the fact that the devil don't fight fair. Here he is hungry, been fasting for 40 days. And the devil said, you know, you're supposed to be all of that. You ought to just like cook some eggs right here. <laughs> you don't even need a fire. Je Jesus was unnerved by inauthenticity. He hated hypocrisy. Jesus loved his enemies. Jesus rebuked hypocrisy. See, his body language is telling the difference. What he said and the tone with which he said it in, indicates that he gets us. He made sacrifices that he didn't want to make in his flesh. Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. I know this is the plan. I know it's what I told you I was going to do. But if you are capable of doing it any other way, I, I know you probably can't, but if it's your will. All right, God. I'm going to die for them people. The greater Mount Zion, 2021, I, I, I'm, I'm having some apprehension about it, but I, I'm going to do that because Denise is going to need me. And this is your will, God. It's the, his body language. He cried. He sweated. He endured all of this without sin. He engaged all of these emotions and shared uh, and said all of the things that he shared and said at the right time and to the right degree. And so he is capable of sharing with us what it is that he has experienced not only in his omniscience, his full comprehensive knowledge of God, but he shares it with us from a place of experience, from a place of 
emotional elation or despair. He knows our experience. He learned obedience, the Bible says, through the things that he suffered to experience, to experience God. Friend, let me tell you something. What a waste. What a waste for Jesus to be born in a cave to run from a Pharaoh that he put in power. <laughs> to live with people in Nazareth who uh, were being oppressed uh, by the Roman soldiers. Why would he do all of this for us to not welcome him in the house? Friend, let me tell you something. The greatest thing you can do today is say, Jesus, I want you to come in and be everything you want to be. I, I'm tired of making, putting you in this room and not that room. I'm, I'm tired of giving you the guest bed. Here's, have my bed. I, Jesus, I, I really want for you to be all of who you are in my life. And if you've never done that, the greatest thing that you can do is to accept him as your leader and forgiver because he understands your lived experience. He, he understands you. The body is always speaking. The body of Christ is still speaking. It's still speaking from the stable. It's still speaking from the sea. It's still speaking from the cross. It's the body language that makes the difference. Jesus says that, listen, there's one more thing and I'm, I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to say bye. Listen, he says, uh, my body is saying, I want to live within you. Everybody say within me. Yeah, I, I want to live within you. Look at somebody near you say within me. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's within me. He's within me. Listen to, to this. Just as Jesus squeezed his glory into his body. He's skillful enough to squeeze his glory into your body. You ought to say amen right there. Yeah, the, the word can become flesh in us. And so he says, I want you to walk with me because I want you to see what it's like when I'm walking within you. The word becomes flesh in us. And when it becomes flesh, we experience his greatness on the inside. Anybody know what it's like to feel God on the inside? Anybody know what it's like to feel power on the inside? Anybody know what it's like to have competency that does not align with your resume because there's something that's going on on the inside through his spirit. He is teaching us on the inside. He's guiding us. He is leading us because his word is in us. Because the word, the word is made flesh in us. Uh, we reveal his greatness. Uh, on the outside, everybody say reveal. reveal. We reveal his greatness on the outside and through our surrender and following him. Uh, we reveal his joy. We, we reveal that serving God is worth it because the word is made flesh in us. Uh, we reveal his power to other people. Uh, we reveal his glory to other people. Uh, we reveal his grace to other people. And the reason why is because the word is made flesh in us. Uh, we, we reveal the power of forgiveness by how we handle other people. We reveal that God can be trusted by, by how we engage other people. People, because his word is made flesh within us. He is on the inside. He is within me. Christ in me is the key. Christ in me is the hope of glory. And friend, if he's on the inside, our body language will tell the story. The Bible says that 
people would not have recognized the Jesus as the Messiah if they just passed him in the marketplace. He didn't look like the Messiah. He, he, didn't, he wasn't wearing the clothes that they thought the Messiah would wear. And he was good with that. He lived humbly. But, but every now and then, Messiah just overflowed out of him. Every now and then, he couldn't keep on the inside, couldn't keep on the inside from exploding onto the outside. And friend, that's the same way with you and me. He says, I'm on the inside. And as you surrender to me, you might try to hold your peace. But what's in you every now and then ought to explode out of you. It's coming out of me. Yeah, it's coming out of me because the word has been made flesh within me. Uh, LaMarcus Aldrich, you remember him. He was a standout at the University of Texas. He's a basketball player. Uh, he was a center for the San Antonio Spurs. And, and LaMarcus Aldrich one day said this. He said, uh, if I want the ball, I, I've got to do more than just call for the ball I have to tell my teammates that I want the ball through how I do it with my body. He, he says, listen, I, I got I to gotta say with my body, pass me the ball. I, I can't always call for it because sometimes I, I don't need to call for it and alert the defense. I, I don't need to do that, but I, I can present myself to my teammate as being ready for the ball. It, sometimes it's just a look that says to my teammate, yeah, I'm ready to receive the ball. And God is saying to us today that I'm looking to see if you're ready to receive the ball. You Don't just tell me through what you say, but I want to see it in your body language because body language is telling the story there are people in our world we are the only bible that they would see and we can say some things and it's good to say some things but the truth is they want to see god through our body language do i have any witnesses in the house no, I got to tell somebody about the Jesus. I got to tell somebody the story. But through my body, I can share the story. Listen to what the Bible says about the word being in us. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Glorify God in your bodies. Offer your bodies as instruments of righteousness. We are the body of Christ. Christ in you. Christ in your body is the hope of glory. Nothing is impossible because Christ is the hope of glory. Glory yesterday. Glory today. Glory tomorrow. Glory forever because Christ in me is the hope of glory. It's about the body language. Our bodies. Our bodies tell the story. Our bodies tell the story. His body told the story. We celebrate on this Christmas day his interest into our experience, experience in a body. 